Good afternoon. I would like to start off by recapping slightly what we've discovered in the blowing of the fifth trumpet. We noticed that God has revealed to us the way in which the devil was going to go about his last activities on planet Earth in getting man to fall. And we saw how that he took different body parts and he put them together and he designed a Frankenstein of death. His whole objective was to get man to lose eternal life. I want to go on today by drawing your attention to Revelation chapter 9 and I'm going to be re reading verse 12. The first woe is past. Two other woes are yet to come. So between the blowing of the fifth trumpet and the blowing of the sixth trumpet, our attention is drawn back to what we discovered in Revelation chapter 8 verse 13. And that is that there was an eagle flying in the air crying out, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth. And you will recall that the, the, the phrase inhabitants of the earth is revealing to us those people who have not yet made their choice for Christ. So somehow our attention is brought, brought back to this and there seems to be a warning in this that time is running out. I want you to notice that if you go to um, the book of Numbers chapter 29 we are told there in Numbers 29 of the Feast of Trumpets and the Day of Atonement. Now the Feast of Trumpets ran over a period of nine days. It was a time that man was given an opportunity to go to the sanctuary and to confess his sin and then have his sin removed from him and placed in the sanctuary. By the ninth day, if you had not done what you were supposed to do, then you would find yourself off God on the 10th day, which was the Day of Atonement, also known as the Day of Judgment. But it was in this day that God's intention was that man who had been estranged from him would actually be reunited to him. And the way that the reunion took place was with those who had, had accepted Christ as their sacrifice. Now I want you to understand the urgency of this, that we've now come to the sixth trumpet. We've only got one more left. And we notice that by the fifth trumpet there were a group of people who have already been sealed, who have already accepted Christ as their Savior. So in some sense they've gone to the sanctuary already and they've confessed their sins. But do you find yourself as one of those who has not yet made a decision? Then I need to tell you that the time is running out. That we are about to experience the blowing of the sixth trumpet. Now before we read the blowing of the sixth trumpet, I would like to remind you again of the time period that we find ourselves in. Now you will recall how that in Revelation chapter 6, we went through different dispensations of time and we've actually come to the last dispensation of time. We had the stars falling from the sky, we had the sun and moon going dark and then the question was asked in Revelation chapter 6 verse 17. For the great day of their wrath has come and who can stand? So our attention was drawn to a question. As we approach the day of atonement, the question is asked, who can stand? And we noticed that from 1844, be, people were not ready for the coming of Jesus Christ. In Revelation chapter 7, we are introduced to four angels who were standing on the four corners of the earth and they were holding back the four winds of the earth to prevent any wind from blowing on the land or on the sea or on any tree. And then we get these words, Then I saw another angel coming from the east, having the seal of the living God. He called out to the four angels who had been given power to harm the land and the sea. Do not harm the land or the sea or the trees until we put a seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. 
Dear friends, I want you to understand there's a reason why I'm drawing your attention to this. That in between the, the blowing of the sixth trumpet, and sorry, the fifth trumpet and the sixth trumpet, we are going to see our attention is going to be again drawn to these four angels who were standing on the four corners of the earth. Now, the moment Christ saw that the, the world was not ready for his coming in 1844, he appealed to the Father and he said to the Father, My blood, my blood, my blood. You know, he, he didn't die on the cross of Calvary. It wasn't a cheap sacrifice. It was for the salvation of mankind. And, he, and the Father, in hearing his son's appeal, gave us an opportunity an extended time, a time of probation, to make our choice. And as a result, we have the blowing of the trumpets, warning us that we are getting closer and closer to the Day of Atonement. The day when Jesus will come in the clouds of heaven. Now let me explain this. In Revelation chapter 9, verse 13, we are introduced to the blowing of the sixth trumpet. It says there, the sixth angel blew his trumpet, and I heard a voice from coming from the horns of the golden altar that is before God. So immediately our attention is drawn to a golden altar. Now in Exodus, the golden altar that, that, was, um, that Moses was asked to build was also known as the altar of incense. This altar was found just before God's presence. There was a veil that was hanging between the holy place and the most holy place, which had the Shekinah glory of God veiled behind it. And this golden altar was to symbolize the prayers of God's people and the request for forgiveness. On the altar, there were four horns on each corner. And on the day, and I want to read this to you. First of all, in Exodus chapter 30 verse 1, we read this. Make an altar of acacia wood for burning incense. Now, incense always symbolized the prayers of God's people and the prayers of our high priest, Jesus Christ. Then it says in verse 10, Once a year, Aaron shall make atonement on its horns. This annual atonement must be made with the blood of the atoning sin offering for, the gener for generations to come. It is most holy to the Lord. So I want you to understand that once a year, the day of atonement where there was a sacrifice made, that atonement sacrifice was placed on the four horns of the golden altar that was placed before God. Now, this has incredible re relevance when it comes to our understanding of what we are about to experience in the blowing of the sixth trumpet. I want you to notice that it says there, when we read it, it said there, the sixth angel blew his trumpet, and I heard a voice from the horns of the golden altar, that is before God. Now it's strange when I think about the horns, the horns always symbolized mercy. By placing the blood on the horns, we were appealing to the mercy of God for the forgiveness of sins. Now I want you to notice that our high priest Jesus Christ has gone after he left his ministry here on planet earth and he went into the presence of the Father to intercede on our behalf. And I want you to notice the importance of this. In Hebrews chapter, chapter 9, we are told of the importance of the blood that is needed as we come and approach before our Heavenly Father. It says there in verse 22, In fact, the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood, and without the shedding of blood there can be no forgiveness of sins. So dear friends, I want you to understand that as we look at this, our attention is drawn to the altar that is before God. And the horns cry out to the trumpet. And I'm going to explain that to you now. But it's also interesting that in Revelation chapter 8, 
But in verses 3 and 5, we were, our attention again was drawn to the golden altar. And it says there in verse 3, Another angel who had a golden censer came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense to offer with, a, with prayer of all the saints on the golden altar before the throne. So this is the golden altar of incense. It says there, The smoke of the incense together with the prayer of the saints went up before God from the, the angel's hand. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and hurled it on the earth, and there came peals of thunder, rumblings, flashes of lightning, and an earthquake. So we notice that as this, the, the coals are flung to the earth, we are introduced to the blowing of the seven trumpets. So the, the golden altar indicates to me quite clearly again that there's a peal by God that mankind should accept his hand of mercy and that there is a cleansing process that is taking place through all of this. I also want to draw your attention again to Hebrews again. We're in the book of Hebrews in chapter 10 and this is going to be our closing verses. Paul writes these words. In verse 19, Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, since we have the blood of Christ and his sacrifice, Paul is saying, by a new and living way, open for us through the curtain that is his body. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, a great high priest who is interceding on our behalf, then he says, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart, in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. So we see again that as the high priest approaches this with the sin offering, he places it on the horns of the altar on behalf of the people who are standing and waiting. Dear friends, I want you to notice what he says further. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who, has, who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. So he says, in this time, as we find ourselves in the presence of God, let us find ourselves in love with our fellow neighbors, in love with mankind, caring for them, and in love with our Heavenly Father, as it says there, with love and good deeds. Verse 25, let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. Dear friends, I want you to notice as we approach the final heartbeats of this world, we need to, as God's people, press together. It then says there, but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching, as we see that day when Jesus will come in the clouds of heaven to fetch us. I have a question, my dear friends. Have you given your heart to Jesus? Have you been sealed by his Holy Spirit? Are you ready for Jesus to come? If you have not yet made your decision for Christ, I urgently request that you will consider seriously that time is running out. You will notice that the person who speaks from the golden altar gives instruction to the, the sixth angel and tells him to do something. That I'm going to tell you tomorrow. God bless you.